Hi, today I'm going to show you how to make uh, three quick no solder uh, antennas uh, for the either the 70 centimeter hand band or the GMRS public bands. Um, all three of these antennas, these basically pieces of coax, uh, crimp on F connectors, and electrical tape. Um, they can be used to replace an antenna that broke off your radio or uh, to replace one that you broke some other some other way, um, but uh, using only minimum minimal tools and time. All these are very quick. Basically they just use uh, pliers, wire cutters, tape, pieces of coax. All the wires from these are made from uh, coax itself, so if you have scrap coax lying around you can make them up pretty quickly. Uh, then I'll do a quick little demonstration of um, how well they work or do not work um, using a simple uh, economical SWR meter. Uh, anyway, I um, hope you get something out of this, uh, find this useful, uh, let's get started. So these are the four antennas, uh, actually two versions of the same one, this is just a quick um, stub antenna using the F connector. This is a dipole and a uh, choke ballon using a coax and uh, an F connector. And last but not least, a uh, quarter wave ground plane uh, using a piece of coax and an F connector. Um, all four of these antennas can be made relatively quickly in a few minutes. Um, you don't need any solder, just um, some electrical tape, uh, F connector, uh, and some coax. A uh, wire stripper would help, but a pocket knife, you could strip a wire in an emergency situation. Um, either way, um, all four of these will get at least a marginal signal out um, if you don't have any other options, and uh, soldering is not needed. So. For the first version, uh, for the stub antenna, you can have, I'm going to make either this one really quick, which you can, uh, you know, use as a direct replacement for your broken stub, and this one here, which will have a little bit more of a standoff and so it's slightly more complex. But this one is very simple. Here I'm using an F connector so I can connect it to any of the adapters as I mentioned earlier. In this case, I'm going to use an SMA connector um, and work from there. So what you want to do is strip off um, maybe a uh, half inch, three quarters of an inch of the, uh, of the uh, plastic. And uh, you'll note that uh, this fits right in here into the SMA connector and stops right near the end here, okay? Now, th the same works true for the uh, F connector as well. This uh, sticks out nicely just like uh, one of the little uh, pegs would uh, if you were soldering up one of these, but it works either way. Um, but in order to keep this, uh, we want to crimp this when we get to that part, but uh, to make it so that's a little more snug in there, what I like to do is put uh, a small piece of uh, electrical tape right around this section here. So you just take a tiny little piece of this electrical tape, like that, maybe uh, less than a quarter inch, otherwise it will be too much. And cut that off, wrap it around the end here. Uh, gently, carefully. You don't, you don't want it to go around more than one whole turn's worth. So actually, if you have a little extra, you want to cut off the excess, or it'll be too much, and you won't be able to insert it into the connector. So make sure that's in there, on there, good and snug. And then you can slip it right in the F connector or the SMA connector. In this case, I'm going to do the F connector. All right. So this is up to its stop. And basically, next, what you do is you crimp this snug. So, all right, and this isn't going to go anywhere. This antenna is pretty much ready to use. Um, you just got to, you know, measure to the correct length. If you're um, doing this for uh, middle of the 70 centimeter hand band in the U.S., you probably want to put the length of this part from where the metal ends to the tip. You want about 164 millimeters. GMRS is is about 154 millimeters. If you want a more specific region. In the um, in the uh, 70 centimeter band, you're going to have to adjust your your antenna length. But make sure when you before you start, you leave uh, enough excess here to uh, to cut the length you need. So remember, uh, this is this is equivalent to being shielded up to this point. So your length of the actual antenna element is going to be measured from here to the tip. Now. You can fold the tip over if you want, or as I do in the case of this, is just put some tape on it to uh, make it less likely to poke you in the eye. You also see here that I have a small piece of shrink tubing. You just you know slip it on the end and heat it up. You can heat it up you know if, if you have a 
nice little handy hand torch, you can use that. Um, or if you're in the field and you don't have uh, anything available, you can use a match, maybe an exhaust pipe uh, tip if it's hot, uh, but it'll work fine. Uh, regardless, quick little antenna. The whole thing um, from start to finish in this situation um, is, you know, 10, 15 minutes. Um, you also, uh, you know, yeah, you make sure you leave a little excess here. You, you trim this off at the end so that's not standing out too much. Um, then it'll go into any standard F connector uh, adapter without any problem and you just screw it on. So if you have uh, an F connector on your radio, you can adapt some of your radios to have F connectors or you can just have an F connector adapter that'll adapt it to an SMA, you know, or whatever other connector that you, you have for your radio. Adapters for F connectors are real easy to find. That's why I like to make these little quick antennas using an F connector because you can find an adapter for almost everything very quickly. Anyway, that's the first antenna. So for the second stub antenna, you want to strip off uh, the insulator first because if you're not careful, you can actually pull the whole insulator through. But make sure you start with a nice long enough length so that you're not pulling the center conductor out. So in this case, um, I'm going to do this in two, two sections. Get this extra insulator off. Uh, the outer, actually, you're taking the, the outer conductor as well as the insulator off because all you want for the actual antenna part is the center conductor. So that this part will come, become your antenna. Uh, so depending on which band you want, you want to make sure you leave enough. So um, for the 70 centimeter band, I want to try to get like at least 17 centimeters, 170 millimeters of this coax stripped. Uh, so we'll get that get that going, and then uh, we can uh, there take that. All right, so. There we go, okay. So now we have at least enough uh, for the center conductor, uh, which would be the actual antenna. And there's plenty there. So that's at least 170 millimeters. Then uh, you can put this as any length as you want. I'm gonna leave maybe six inches and uh, I'll, put, uh, I'll put one of these uh, connectors on it, F connectors on it so that uh, I can have that for the uh, connector to my adapter or directly to the radio if I have an F connector on the radio itself. Okay, so the coax connector's on. Um, basically, once you have the coax stripped down to the point you want uh, the stub part length, uh, all you have to do is uh, measure this and trim this to size. Now, what you want to also make sure is once you strip this connector, the insulation from this, you want to make sure that there are no wires from the uh, insulator or from the um, coax shield touching your center conductor which is your antenna because if you're touching if they're touching you're gonna have a short and it's not gonna work so just go around here probably want to use some good light if possible and uh, make sure you don't have any uh, wires touching now if you want you can you know you can put some tape around the end here uh, just so that uh, you you ensure that they're separated. You don't have to use a lot, uh, but put this tape around once you're sure that there's no uh, wires touching the center conductor. And just wrap that around like that snugly. And just tighten that up like that. Or you can use some shrink tubing if you want, make it look a little prettier. But remember when you measure your Center conductor length, uh, you want that to be the length of your uh, actual antenna. So make sure you measure that from uh, the beginning port, the beginning point. Uh, you want to measure that exactly as exact as possible, uh, the, cor the correct length that you need for the uh, quarter wave antenna. And then you trim it uh, from there. Uh, you might only need a little extra so that you can trim it for uh, when you, if you want to measure it on your SWR meter see if it's any good but uh, if you're in the field and you don't have any any other tools um, other than like a wire cutter and some coax um, this is all you need to do as long as it's not touching uh, and it's, it's the length that you uh, need to for the particular frequency of interest then it should work fairly well uh, if you want to do a more permanent version I would put some shrink tubing around here um, maybe some more around the bottom part of the conductor you can put you can cover the whole conductor and shrink tubing if you want and then uh, maybe either fold this end down or put some tape on the end of it so that it's not, you know, going to poke your eye out or whatever. You don't want to poke your eye out with that thing. Um, <clears throat> so that's that for the, the basic stub. Now, this is not going to, you know, 
uh, transmit as well as a dipole or a quad or a or a ground plane quarter wave or um, a uh, collinear antenna. But uh, to replace the stub on your radio, um, quick and easy, and it'll work uh, as long as you get it reasonably low uh, to the correct length. Now for the second uh, antenna I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do actually a quarter wave with um, four ground radials. Uh, no solder also. I already have this portion of it prepared. Um, oh, one other thing to note, th this acts just like a regular piece of coax. Um, the shield goes all the way up to here. This part's the antenna. This is still as if you had a long piece of coax, except it's very short and uh, just because this is a 75 ohm, ohm coax it really doesn't it's not going to have any significant effect, especially in an emergency situation. So you can just screw this onto your adapter, or screw it on your radio, or screw it on your radio directly. Um, same goes for this. Um, this can be any reasonable length. You know, you don't want five feet, ten feet, or whatever, because then you're going to start having um, impedance issues. But for the most part, um, you want to do a quick little quarter wave ground plane. Uh, start starting point. You can start at the same starting point as this. Uh, this stuff. Make sure once again that you don't have any. Um, wires touching your center conductor and then what you need is four additional pieces of center conductor or you can use other wire if you want if you have it if you have some you know 20 gauge hookup wire uh, sitting around uh, you can use that as well but uh, what you can do is make sure you have some extra length so these are about uh, uh, what they're about eight inches long 200 millimeters or so take the bottom half inch centimeter or so and just give it a little bend and then you're going to slip this in here next to the shield. So between the the insulator, the outer insulator, and the shield, uh, you can slip this in here carefully, and that's one radial. Um, now, of course, you want you'll want to measure that uh, to length at some point. You can always put a clamp on the bottom of this in the end. But basically, you take the other four pieces, you do the same thing. About a half inch, one centimeter or so. Whoops, made that one a little wonky. We'll fix that. Uh, but uh, it works better if they're nice and flat. Uh, but bend that nicely. Give it a little angle. Try to space them fairly evenly around. So in this case, I want to go about one quarter of the way around. And do the same thing. Slip that in. All right. There's another radial. Now you want to get them as evenly as possible. It's not crazy critical, but it definitely is somewhat important to get them evenly spaced because then the ground plane will be nice and even. Same thing, third one. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go about halfway. Slip that in right about here. There we go. So that's three of the four. And the last one. We'll do the same thing as the other three. A little bit of a bend here. And make sure we're spaced again fairly well. Slip that down in. The last one's going to be a little bit more snug because you got these other things sitting in here. All right, so now you have uh, four radials ready to go. If you want to adjust them to a 45 degree angle, you do so, but once uh, once you have all the radials in, uh, don't bend them down yet. But what you can do is to hold these in. I thought maybe a band clamp would work, but this doesn't get small enough. If you have one that's small enough, or some kind of a crimp um, clamp, it'll work because uh, these these will be too small. The actual um, crimp connector sleeves will be too small to fit around these. You probably can get it if you really work at it. If you have a larger uh, crimp sleeve, uh, that might work, and then you can just crimp that down. But um, if you don't have anything available, you can take a piece of, an extra piece of, uh, of the uh, conductor and take your pliers, give that a tight twist. This is, do this a few times so it snugs down there. Uh, get that like that. And you can see it's kind of squeezing in there. So that'll hold them better uh, than no crimp at all. No crimp connect at all, you can cut the excess off. Just make sure you don't cut your radials. Oops, there goes one across the room. And then just flatten that down so it's not uh, sticking out. You can push that up like that. There we go. Don't impale your fingers or whatever. And then these, rearrange these properly. And that'll be a little more snug. And then you can always add 
uh, a little bit of electrical tape, but then uh, bend them down to the proper angle, roughly 45 degrees. These are not pretty. And make sure your length is cut. Measure your length uh, from the center, from where your center is. Measure out to the length needed. And then you just trim these to the proper length for your uh, frequency of interest. It's pretty quick and easy. You can always leave a little bit extra for adjustments, but the le exact length of the radial are not, not as critical as the uh, center conductor of the antenna. But you just trim these. And the last one here. So that one. And then lastly, trim your antenna to length. Let's get that there. This one you need to be a little bit more precise on, um, depending on, on the exact frequency. You can need to leave a little extra to trim if you want to make a more permanent version uh, to match with SWR. But in a pinch, no solder needed. Uh, like I said, these can be taped up, straightened out. Um, but this will, you know, work fairly well in an emergency. It's not very pretty, you know, but I'm not going to tweak it out so it's uh, perfectly uh, evened out right now. But if you're having an emergency, something like this will, will uh, work fairly enough. Like I said, it takes some more time with it. Maybe put a crimp connector in here, shrink tubing uh, around the outside, or some electrical tape to keep these separated and a little bit more stable. Um, but once you have it all set up, uh, it should work fairly well. Now the last antenna uh, I'm going to do uh, is a dipole uh, based on the same basic setup, same basic beginning setup, except I want to use a longer piece of cable because um, you're going to want to put a um, common mode uh, bell and make it out of the cable itself. Now if you happen to have some beads in your, uh, some ferrite beads in your to go kit, you can put some of these uh, on your coax them on there and that'll help with the RF on the outside of the shield uh, but a quick uh, other method to do it is to take uh, some of your extra coax that's why I have this extra coax here and you make uh, for the frequency of interest uh, in this case like I said 70 centimeter or FRS GMRS uh, or, well GMRS in this case um, put uh, three or four coils of this um, three or four coils of this and uh, then you can tape it with your electrical tape all right so once your once your um, your little chokes made you have all this set up uh, all you have to do for the dipole part of it is to once again you're making sure that you have no conductors touching your your uh, your center conductor so this is one part of your dipole and then you probably want to put a piece of, well, you definitely want to put a piece of electrical tape on in this case. So, this part's done. Using another piece of wire, um, you're going to want to make a, a dipole for half wave, but like I was mentioning, you definitely want, to, uh, definitely want to make sure that this center conductor does not touch any of the shield. So first, uh, bend this just like you did with the uh, quarter wave ground plane antenna. Bend that like that. Slip that in. Make sure it goes all the way. There, like that. There we go. So that is touching. That's touching the uh, shield. Then. Uh, you want to put a little tape around your center conductor to make sure that it does not uh, come in contact with the, the coax shield. I actually don't need a piece of that quite that big to, to do that. A smaller piece. Take that right there. Put that around. Should be adequate. A few turns. Ready to go. Okay. So that's definitely protecting it from there. Bend that puppy down. Hey, look at that dipole. So take this when you're done, 
make it nice and straight. Take the other piece of tape actually. That right here, and that'll help to hold this in position. Straighten that out. And you have a serviceable dive roll. Put another piece of tape on here to help a little bit. Slide that like that. This will help snug it up once it's, once it's nice and tight in there. All right, so there you go. There's your dive pole. Uh, you can feed it however you want. You can still use this as a rubber ducky if you really want to put it on your your mobile unit. Uh, it's probably a little bit heavy for that. You don't probably don't want to connect it directly to it uh, that way. But regardless, you have a serviceable dive pole. Uh, then you just trim these edges uh, to equal um, half wavelength in this case uh, uh, for the. Uh, 70 centimeter center band, 430, uh, 164 millimeters, or for the GMRS band, uh, 154 millimeters each each length. So you're going to measure that out from here and get that in there and get it to the correct length so that you have a serviceable dipole. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to check the SWR of the various antennas. It's using a Workman SWR watt meter. Um, the SX144-430 for 120 to 500 megahertz. The radio I'm using puts out about a watt. I have it on the 10 watt setting. The single wire stub, just under a watt. SWR is about 1.1. Interestingly enough, it seems to put out the most power, but it also has the worst SWR. Now I'm testing the uh, stub antenna with the six inches of coax. Looks like it's just about over a half a watt. And maybe a little less than 1.1 SWR. Okay, next we're testing the quarter wave ground plane uh, antenna also on a six inch stub. You see that's putting out just under a watt and the SWR is about 1.1, 1.05, just a little less than 1.1. And last but not least, the half wave dipole. Looks like it's putting out just about a watt and the SWR is about 1.05. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Uh, maybe you got some ideas on it and want to experiment on your own. Uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Uh, and, and as always, uh, thanks for watching.